Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. This week I'm going to show you part three of this four part series on how I painted this fox. Before we get going I should probably apologise for my croaky voice. I've had flu this week and have only just got my voice back. There are subtitles to this video so if the croaking is putting you off just switch off the sound and read the captions instead. Before I show you the painting video, which is approximately 40 minutes long, I wanted to speak briefly about the brushes that I used on layer 3. Layers 3 and 4 are where all the work is done, and so brush selection is more important than on layers 1 and 2. For this area here, the crevice of the fox's eyes, I used a small round brush. These brushes are great for precision and detail, but they will tighten up your painting and so should be used sparingly if you are after brushwork that is loose and expressive. For the short fur on the fox's face, I used a combination of short, fat brushes in various sizes. The smaller ones were used for the nose area and the larger ones for the fur around the eyes. It is important to remember that these sort of brushes are not great for adding wet paint on top of wet paint. If you do not lay the paint in the right way with these brushes, it will pull the underneath paint off. You are best off imagining that you are placing the paint onto the surface of a canvas, a little bit like you would lay a sticker, rather than trying to brush it on. If you can use these brushes like a sort of a soft palette knife, for the longer fur around the top of the fox's head and onto its body, I used a selection of Eclipse Long Haired Combers by Rosemary & Co. I have a good selection of these ranging in sizes of very thin to thicker brushes. The ends of these brushes are serrated and they are extremely soft and flexible. Because of this, they allow you to drag wet paint across wet paint. This gives a really great soft effect that helps resemble fur. Also as well, as the paint gets thicker around these facial areas, swapping to the coma brush can be beneficial to preventing pulling up paint. Finally, for the background areas, I used much larger brushes, including the filbert and also the standard blocking in brush. Now I've told you a bit about the brushes, I'm going to show you the painting video, which is layer three of this painting. In last week's video, I broke down the colours of the finished painting at the start of the video. In week one, I did a section on colour mixing. It may be helpful to refresh your memory of these before you start on this layer and perhaps keep it to hand during the painting may also be helpful as there is quite a bit of detail on temperature shifts and also complementary colours used. The painting time of this video will be approximately 40 minutes. I will try to provide as much commentary on what I'm doing as I can. However, it can be quite hard to talk non-stop for 40 minutes. And so there will be times where I go quiet. Please do not adjust your volume. I'm just not speaking. When you first start this layer, you are best checking that the drawing is correct. I was a bit out with the drawing in some areas. So I fixed this first before getting stuck into painting the fox. I used a blocking brush just to define the correct edges and then push the paint out into the background. I pushed the paint out from the fox's coat into the background. Having a wet edge all the way around the fox gives me more options for losing edges later. You don't want your background to be too uniform so make sure you vary your paint in terms of temperatures in this area and just be very loose with your brush strokes.
I started with the ears mainly because the top one is adjacent to the background and so I can start to establish lost edges by pulling the paint into the wet background paint. Both ears carry some of the same colour so painting them together saves on mixing later. I mix both warm and cool browns as both ears have both orange browns and blue browns. Always keep an eye on your edges. If it begins to look a little odd, usually an edge needs softening somewhere. That top ear proved a little bit problematic. It took me a while to get it right. Looking at it now, I can see the issue is the edge and also the drawing is off. But it took a while to figure this out. Be careful also when adding the white paint. This is where the coma brush becomes useful as they allow you to blend and flick the paint about a bit. Don't over blend though. I thought you'd be interested to know that I had a complete nightmare with this layer. About two thirds of the way through, it was really going very badly and I began to lose control of the painting. There was too much paint on it to allow me to correct it and so I made the decision to scrape back all the paint and start the layer again. The best way to do this is with a palette knife or some sort of scraping tool. Then taking some kitchen roll with some mineral spirits on it, remove the rest of the paint. Blot the surface with dry kitchen roll to remove any surface mineral spirits. The painting at this point will look really bad, but everything is recoverable. I then repainted my layer two and left the painting to dry so I was ready to have another go at layer three. I found layers three and four of this painting incredibly challenging and so it is okay if it takes more than one attempt to get it right. So don't be put off if you don't get it right first time. Just have another go. Generally, my strategy for this sitting was to start with the body. This was mainly because the previous day I had started with the face area and messed it up. So it was a mental thing really. I didn't want to mess up the same areas in two days running. For the top of the head area, I used strong orange mixes. I always run a trace of blue through them though, just to neutralise them a little. You do not want overly saturated oranges as a fox's fur is just not that colour in real life. The lighter I go, the more white I have to add. Don't forget white kills colour, so you will have to add more oranges and or yellow to your mix to compensate for this.
You can also use your combers to pull that fur out into the background. Keep turning that brush around so you make both thick marks and thin marks. Once you have enough paint on there, it, it makes it easier to start pushing and pulling around and adjusting the colour. Be careful though, there is a fine line between enough paint and too much paint and you can tip over the edge very quickly into too much paint. I painted layers three and four on consecutive days. It's very important that the paint is still wet when you move on to layer four, as you need to be able to do this part of the painting in a sort of a la prima way. I used a little bit of linseed oil on this layer. Be very sparing with the amount used though, as you don't want your paint too fluid because losing control is more likely with very wet paint. Ideally, my aim is to get enough paint on the canvas over layers three and four to be able to push and pull the paint around, but you mustn't rush to get it all covered. Take your time and build up the paint slowly and thoughtfully. The painting needs to be applied pretty correct at this stage in terms of value, temperature and colour with what you think you are looking at. This is why the layers method generally is a good system of painting because it gives you a better chance of being able to make those correct choices. You have already given yourself a head start with layers one and two. Going from zero paint to correct in all one go is very hard. Generally, I work from light to dark on whatever section I am working on. Save the areas with the most white paint until last. 
That said, you can continuously adjust the values as you go along, as you may find that as you lighten one area and go too far with it, you may need to pull back another area and adjust the values there. The most important thing is not to have too much paint on the painting, as too much paint makes it harder to adjust your paint. Also, don't try to paint all the detail of the fur, that is every single hair as you see it in your reference photo. Instead, try to paint the impression of the fur by editing what you are looking at. If you are unsure how to do this, then just squint at your reference photo and it will naturally remove a lot of the detail. Moving on to the ear section now and a whole new set of colours. So you may need to mix up some dark cools with your alizarin crimson, ultramarine deep and cadmium yellow. Make sure you make enough of it as you'll be adding it into other mixes and also adjusting it quite a bit too. You can mix some of the colour straight into your oranges to give you much darker, cooler browns. The inside of that bottom ear is in the shadows, so the colours will be cool and also very similar to the shadow colours on the ground.
As I bridge across the painting, I am sticking with all the dark areas and using my rich black. If I want to lighten this black a little, I either add orange or green depending upon whether I want to warm it up or cool it down. Whilst I am being quite definite with my dark edges, I will soften this as I build up the colours in both the background shadow and also the fox's fur. I am using a very new flat brush for this part as I am taking advantage of the very crisp lines I can get from its sharp edge. For the area around the fox's eye, I am using my Elysian Crimson mixed with my rich black. As the colour of the fur changes, I just start to mix in some of my oranges. Remember though, this area is still in the shadows, so the orange needs to be neutralised with some blue. Don't use the same oranges that we use for the top of the head area, which is directly in the light.
Make sure that you lay your strokes in a way that helps suggest form. Imagine lots of contour lines around the face of the fox and try to lay them as these lines would fall. I am working on each big block of colour individually that I showed you at the start of last week's video where I subdivided them into four sections. So in my head I am approaching this painting in those four blocks of colour. Once I have done one block I move on to another block. So I am thinking about this picture in quite abstract terms, that is in blocks of colour and blocks of shape. The more you can simplify the reference photo in your head the easier you'll find it to paint. The eye that is nearest to the ground is actually the trickiest one to paint because there are a lot of colour shifts between rich blacks, reds, greens and oranges, all in that area. It took me quite a while to get it right. Just make sure you load in enough Elysrian crimson when moving out of the blacks, otherwise it will turn into a dull sludge.
Joining up those two sections, this area above the fox's eye is carrying more green. I used my cadmium yellow to get a brighter green and neutralised a bit with my alizarin crimson. That area along the side of the fox's mouth is actually quite tricky as there are a lot of colour shifts. You need to use your rich black for that little dark indentation bit, but you need to lighten it up with your cad yellow. Then there is that lighter area, which is the white of his fur. That is the same colour as that shadowed background, but it is just a bit lighter and a bit warmer. Remember, warmer colours come forward, cool recede. So whilst the white fur is in the shadows, if it is as cool as that background, it will get lost in that whole area. By making it a little bit warmer, you'll begin to create a separation between the fox and its background. When you get to a point where most of the fox is covered in paint, it really is tweaks here and there. How much tweaking you do on an area is really up to you and how comfortable you are with doing this. Tweaking can often result in losing a painting. So if you feel an area is okay and working, then it is best to leave it and work on the areas that aren't.
It is a constant tightrope between losing it and getting it back, almost with every stroke you lay. But you don't want to be precious about it because it affects your painting. You have to paint with the resolve that you are okay if you lose it. That is not the same as painting with a haphazard attitude where you will definitely lose it. Paint confidently and thoughtfully. This will give you good brushwork. When do you stop between layers three and four? Well, I think it's just when you feel you've reached a suitable point or you've had enough and the focus is fading. Here I decided to stop because I felt I'd had an okay painting day and the fox was still on track to how I wanted it to be. I probably could have kept going a bit longer, but after the disaster of the previous session where all the paint had to, to come off, I wanted to end the day on a positive, so I felt it was best to stop whilst I felt I was ahead and still felt good about what I'd managed to achieve that day. That was layer three, so I will see you back here then next week when we tackle layer four. I hope you have found today's video useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find details of online classes that I run and also examples of my work. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.